I mean, with with that being the case, is uh, being able to punch a ball um, for yeah. crosses. Is that becoming more uh, more of a required skill? Definitely punching the ball, and certainly in terms of the assessment, is actually leaving it later. So okay. to, to see the movement on the ball, because yeah. if you try and time it where you pick up the flight and you're going to drive through the flight and take it at this highest point, yeah. all of a sudden when that ball goes a little wobble or a dip, so I think the goalkeepers have got to leave it a little bit later yeah. when they assess, which actually means that they've then got to come quicker. Yeah. Um, and that's why the speed, for me, the speed to, to be able to deal yeah. with the flight of the ball is paramount. Well, you mentioned you went to Real Madrid and the speed of their keepers. Was there anything in particular they did that uh, would sort of explain their increased speed? Uh, the first thing they did, the first uh, 25 minutes, they actually joined in with the outfield players. Really? Yeah, so they did They, they did a base, base jog, stretch, mm -hmm. boxes, you know, possession boxes. Yeah, yeah. So they joined in with the outfield players. They then went off for about 25 minutes with a goalkeeping coach. They came back on for 25, around about 25 minutes, where they played some small-sided games. Mm -hmm. And uh, once they did that, they then went back with the goalkeeping coach okay. for probably about 15, 20 minutes. Right. And actually, because Elas didn't do the, the 15, 20 minutes at the end, right. um, that was really a little bit extra for the goalkeepers who, who hadn't played. Jersey Dudek was, was one of them. Oh, yeah. The one thing that was, when you talk about um, speed around the goal, the one thing which I saw during the small sided games, which was which was fantastic with Kazilas, was they were conditioned games and they were all on one, the game was one touch finish, so it was a small sided game, mm -hmm. one touch finish. He actually plays the game and as soon as he realises that somebody can't shoot, he doesn't get into line of the ball, yeah. he's moving into line of where the ball is likely to go yeah, the next yeah. time. Yeah. And it was, it was so good to watch because as soon as he realised that the player receiving yeah. couldn't shoot, mm. where, where where could the next strike come in from? Yeah. So he was so quick around his goal and he was he was fantastic. Well, I think this touches on and it's something I'm huge into is, is goalkeeping intelligence. Yeah. In that, um, again, I watch a lot of football and um, uh, there's not a lot of goalkeeping pundits around right now, which is perhaps maybe a reason why, but a lot of very good goalkeeping goes unnoticed. Uh, in the like you say things like that where they've either read the game fantastically well um, or you know a great bit of distribution or, or whatever it may be or positioning even the fact yeah. that they've got the correct position, position. to make a save yeah. whereas it, it seems to me a lot of credit or well credit will generally go if they've saved a penalty or made a full stretch save or generally a save you know there's yeah. so much like that in terms of goalkeeping te intelligence yeah. uh, how can that be improved is watching football uh, uh, what's the word? Modelling the the best is that is that one way? Is there other ways that goalkeeping intelligence? Uh, I guess taking your collection of books and DVDs yeah. is probably another way. Certainly, there's there's a lot of resources out there, mm. um, but I th I think in terms of the game, I think the goalkeepers have got to experience the game themselves, mm. and if they've got somebody who actually and you know understands what's going on and that particular person, the coach or whatever, can say to the goalkeeper, well, actually in this situation, you know, if, if you go a yard or two further, you're gonna cause yourself a problem. It might be, as an option, yeah. just try and play a little bit deeper, or you're playing a little bit deep, just try and play a yard further advanced. Yeah. So, for the goalkeepers to experiment, because yeah. there's only one way they'll, they'll find out. And if they experiment and they like it, yeah. you know, they might experiment and, and no, I, you know, I find it difficult and I think the starting distances down the line of the ball is the best example because yeah. everyone can see it, yeah. um, you know, the strike's coming from 25 yards and you've got one goalkeeper two yards off the line and you've got one goalkeeper five yards off the line, mm. you know, and Peter Cech is five yards and Dida is two yards yeah. and Buffon is probably about three yards, you know, yeah. and well, what's right? It's what's right for the goalie. For the goalie. And they probably all experimented, Peter Cech has probably defended the goal deeper yeah. and thought, no, I'm, you know, my success rate is I'd better be a little bit more advanced. Dida has probably defended the goal more advanced yeah. and then thought, no, actually, I want to be a little bit deeper. Well, I suppose there's so many things you know? to consider in this. It's, it's, and that's, that's the simple way. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of, I mean, I suppose one that, I said hundreds that will spring to mind, but one in particular will be, uh, so through ball's your position on a through ball. Um, uh, if it's a slip pitch, I might give myself an extra yard knowing yeah. that the ball's going to zip through, whereas... Yeah. 
if uh, the wind as well plays a oh. factor, if it's a sticky pitch, a, a through ball could cool. literally just yeah. stop and, and make, and all these things, which again, I guess a lot of that could be done in the warm-up, um, yeah. kind of take a, take a note of, of things such as that. Uh, yeah.